I'll start. Obviously, uh, it, a crazy week, but a, a great day for us <clears throat> with, you know, hopefully becomes anticlimactic in a lot of ways just because the sheer fact of um, you've had a lot of these guys in the boat for quite a while. And, you know, you, you kind of – there were not a whole lot of surprises today, which is a great thing. Um, but sometimes with that, there <clears throat> you lose sight of how much work was done from the last really three years with a lot of these guys, these local kids, the, the seven kids we would call in the state of Cincinnati um, have, you know, we've been building a relationship with, I think for at least the last three years. And I think that uh, when you finally sign them, sometimes you, if you forget about all the hard work uh, of every one of these coaches and everybody in our recruiting department that uh, has put in um, to have this opportunity. So it, it's a great day. Uh, obviously, there's a lot going on. This is kind of unique with, uh, you know, with having a championship game on Saturday, signing day on Wednesday. Uh, but nonetheless, it was uh, <clears throat> much needed for us because, you know, we got a lot of really good seniors. Um, I think maybe six of them are, are first team all league or second team all league. And um, I know for us in general, losing a lot of senior defensive linemen, um, it was really big for us in this class. You know, we, we put a lot of heat on. Coach Scruggs and Coach Freeman, those guys, that, that this was a big class for us D-line-wise because we're losing such depth and, and some guys that have played a lot of football and some really good football for us. So uh, happy to see that. And every year, obviously, the, the offensive line is where we you know, want to make sure that we, uh, we take pride in, in the development of those guys. And each year, you, you, can't, uh, you can't go without making sure you've got a good, good number of those guys that you can develop over the next few years. So all in all, obviously, a great day. And, and not to mention, um, to me, the, uh, the, uh, the, the video, so to speak, the, the, uh, the stuff that our, our people did as far as um, you know, the Twitter stuff and, and making sure we recognize all these um, young men. It, uh, they've done a phenomenal job with, with Chad uh, Bowden and, and, <clears throat> and that whole crew and Kelsey Sharkey with you know, what it is that they did. That, that stuff, uh, in the midst especially of, of us preparing for games and preparing for you know, a championship, it takes so many people to, to continue to not just develop these relationships but keep these guys um, – informed on everything that we're doing and, and being on the cutting edge. So the, you can't do this without a lot of great people, um, coaches included. Obviously, those are the guys that really build the relationship with these guys, uh, but all the other people behind the scenes that do so much to uh, give us this opportunity. So thank you to all of them, and obviously thank you to the, a new group of 23 Bearcats uh, that we're really excited to officially have now. Do I have questions? Coach, especially at the top of this list, you got a lot of guys that, that have some versatility, can can go a bunch of different ways. Uh, how do you handle keeping Freeman and Denbrock from uh, from fighting over them? <laughs> well, we're going to do what we say we're going to do. Uh, I think first and foremost, you know, I, I know that watching some uh, some other clips, guys today were like, wow, that guy would be a really good fit. And I said, hey, let's – most important thing is, is we got the kids we want here, and, and I mean that in the right ones, meaning um, – the makeup, and I don't just mean fitting in uh, schematically, but in the makeup of the things that we try to do and want to do. Uh, and then we get them here, <clears throat> and they all have an, a vision of what it is that they are and where they want to be. And, and, you know, you let them have that opportunity, and you put them in those situations, and that's when they thrive the most. So uh, the great thing is, and you know, we've, we've said it since, you know, for the last four years that the key for us, I think, in recruiting is when you've got guys with versatility that, you know, they're not just pigeonholed into one position. And when they come in, they let their bodies develop, they let everything develop, and they figure out what's going to be the best fit for them every bit as much as we help uh, to try to find what's the best fit for us as well. Start at the top with Shema Mateer. Um How were you able to get down into Florida? And I know you were looking for, for a tight end prospect along with Caleb Schmidt throughout the entire cycle, but to get a kid that's that size and, and that ability. Yeah, I think that was one of those ones today that Coach Freeman was quite uh, in uh, Coach Scruggs and myself as well, watching some basketball highlights and some clips of uh, what he can do and what he has done on the basketball court. You know, you don't get as close up look because he's one of those guys that, you know, we've never really um, been able to sit down and really spend some time with him and his mother. Um, it's been all Zoom. It's been all virtual um, just because of the sheer fact that, uh, you know, we weren't down there uh, in the spring. He wasn't able to come here in the summer. Um, so we've 
it started off with obviously our recruit department with Chad and, and, and Pat and those guys developing and starting a relationship uh, with Shimon and kind of locating him for us. And then obviously Coach Dembrock and everybody jumping aboard and <clears throat> just building a relationship. Um, it helps obviously with what we've done and, and with our tight ends in particular, obviously with Josiah um, being a third round draft pick and then seeing what, uh, you know, all of our tight ends and how we've used them this year. I think it, it gives us the opportunity for a guy like Shimon down in Miami, Florida to, to really kind of take notice to how we use our tight ends and what, uh, what he could bring to the table as well. Coach, you mentioned some of the uh, unique personalities you have there on your recruiting staff. What, what did you think about some of the, the videos and everything today and just how have they impacted the, the recruiting for you guys over the past year or so? It's huge. I mean, there, you, can't, you can't put a value on creativity uh, and the ability to, you know, just – continue to generate stuff that, that excites people. And, and I don't just mean recruits. I, I know it excites people within our community. I know it excites people that are in the fan base. Um, but I think in general, in this recruiting, it, it's such a big um, time to build relationships. It's such a time where everybody's trying to get guys information, especially with COVID and about their program. And when they see the consistency to what these guys do, the creativity to how they do it. Um, and then obviously the, the, you know, the, the, the relationships that they are able to build because they, they love what they do. They put the time in. They love the program. Um, they can sell things really well because they believe it. It's in their heart. And those guys have done a great job. And I, and I mean all of them. I mean, Kelsey, everybody has to work together because one great idea just doesn't work if you can't put all the pieces together. Uh, and what they do from locating guys, building relationships, staying in communication, and tying those whole groups together um, – I tell you what, they are far underpaid, and, and they work uh, an extremely, an extremely hard and, and long hours. Because um, as you know, 17, 18 year olds, 19 year olds, they don't use the same hours that we use at times. And these guys are communicating with them uh, at all hours of the night in, in many different ways. And um, they make our job a bit easier as coaches because you know, you, especially during the season, you get so tied into what you're doing. Talk about being an all offensive and defensive line driven program. You mentioned adding five defensive linemen, also three offensive linemen. Uh, how satisfied are you with, with your ability to continue improving both the defensive and offensive line rooms? It's huge for us because, you know, I think it, as we've gone through the season, I know we didn't have maybe all first team guys, but um, if you really, to me, if we go through what we've done this year and even last year, I would say our greatest asset has been our ability up front to um, not just dominate football games, but obviously kind of wear people out in, in how we've done things. And, and it starts up there. And uh, each and every year, you can't, you can't slip on it. You know, we've been fortunate enough when we got here to have some really you know, good depth at the defensive line. And I think we've done a, a good job in the weight room and development and relationships with that. <clears throat> but to continue to kind of reload there um, is huge. And uh, we've got a, a good mix of guys that I think maybe have an opportunity to come in and help us right away to guys where I think maybe their, their best football is, is another year or two down the road. And, you know, that's what uh, excites us more than anything. Obviously, you couldn't take trips, couldn't have crews come in. At the end of the day, did that end up making much of an impact or were you able to work around it? Maybe your class? Well, I think it made us be really kind of creative and unique. I think it was, it was really beneficial to us, um, as you see with the seven kids that we would call the state of Cincinnati, the seven kids that are from right around here, our, our ability um, to build relationships before COVID hit was really big. And I know we don't do and can't do the club scene and the, anymore but I think that having some of those guys over there at an early age um, building that relationship getting to know them having them on campus um, when the when the kind of the storm hit I think that we kept kind of hitting going back to them and say look when you get in the midst of a storm you got to go with what you know what you believe and who you can trust and I think for us in the long run that really in some ways benefited us not that you didn't want kids to go out and see but <clears throat> when they obviously got stuck into a situation um, we had built some trust and respect with them. We had built some relationships with them, um, and they really kind of thrived that, and, and, and they believed in that. And you know, not being able to get other places might have been more difficult on them. Um, but then, uh, you know, then you look at how we built some relationships with some guys that are obviously outside of this 300-mile uh, or 50-mile radius, and it took a lot of work, different work, you know, different work, meaning that 
you know, you don't get that opportunity to go out and see him and watch him run around and things like that. So you got to be creative and, you know, ask them to send videos and ask them to do different things and talk to their high school coaches and ask them to film things just so you can get um, your best evaluation on them. Any good stories of uh, your wife putting you through the ringer in order to get a commitment from her son? <laughs> no, but uh, I would say that sometimes when you recruit somebody you know pretty well, maybe too well, um, you say some things that you wouldn't say to the normal recruit. And I would probably say when, uh, when someone I knew really well wanted to commit, I wouldn't take it. I said, you aren't serious enough. That's not what we're looking for. That's not what we want. And, and said some things that maybe I would have liked to have said to somebody else at some point in time. Um, but nonetheless, I got my point across. And uh, you know, it all works in the, in the long run. But uh, there's some unique situations there as well. Was that weird for you at all? I mean, it's obviously this whole season's been weird, but how unique was was that, you know, having your son thinking about it and then obviously doing it all tonight? Yes, it was. It, it, uh, it, it is definitely unique. And to be honest, it, had we not had the core nucleus of guys here in the program, I would probably um, – have not sided with him, even like Coach Crook saying that this is what I want in our recruiting department, or this is who we want, because, you know, I think it can be difficult um, if you don't have a great relationship, even with the coaches that might be coaching somebody that's, you know, your son or related to you in some ways, that they have to have enough um, trust and respect, you know, on both sides to say, hey, I, you know, I know that this isn't going to be an issue. So, um, I'm very fortunate to have had Coach Crook. I'm very fortunate to have those guys that, you know, I could step away and, and not let – ask them, don't be biased about anything. And, and uh, you know, had, had it not been like that, had we not, you know, maybe been in year four and, and built the relationships that we built even within our program and coaches, I would have probably been really difficult for me to, to, to kind of be able to step back and, and be objective on it. Is it more difficult or less difficult to recruit somebody in your own house, to, to convince somebody in your own house to come play for you? You don't – I guess when they're in, within your own home, you're, you're not convincing um, because I'm probably a bit too honest. You know, when it comes – like I said, you, you started saying things that, that you probably wouldn't say to a normal recruit. Um, but I, it's just different. It, it just really is. It's It's – you know, in some ways, for me, I never had, uh, I had never envisioned um, wanting my son or anybody within my family to play for me. I just, you know, I wanted them to have their own experiences, to be honest with you. And then you know, what we have done here, and I don't mean just mean on the football field, but um, what our coaching staff and what this, this group of men have built here uh, inside our locker room, to be honest with you, I, I started to realize I didn't want my son anyplace else. And, and, and you know, it's not just because of – it's surely not because of me. Um, it's not just because we're winning, um, but because I want them to be around the young men we got inside that locker room and just what the, how, they, how, they, uh, how they compete with each other, how they take care of each other, the relationships they build with each other. Um, you know, it, it's, it's different and it's special. How special is it? What's that? You're good, you're good. Go ahead, Caleb. You're follow-up. Yeah, I was just going to follow up and ask how special it was today just seeing it come to fruition. You know, I mean, you see him commit, you yeah. see all this, and you can't really talk about it a whole lot, but to see it actually come to fruition today and see him put ink on paper. You know, again, it, it is. It's, it, it's, it's exciting. Um, I, you know, I try to distance myself. Like someone kind of asked today, some of the, the defensive guys were making fun of me. said, you guys didn't do anything different for, like, your little son's day. I said, you know, it's very business-like. We try to try to keep that other side out of it a bit. But um, I know this. It, it's really exciting in our home. It's really exciting not just to have um, him here, but to have him close to home. And, and I'm so excited to have – to throw him in the mix with a group of uh, – with, with an offensive line unit and a group of guys that – are going to challenge him just like us as coaches, but um, he's going to get what I believe I got coming out of college, a, a group of guys that uh, you can count on for the rest of your life. Speaking of you, you in college. Uh-oh, no, no, we're not going there. We're not at no stories on college. <laughs> whatever whatever you've been trying to dig up, no, no. Did you have a relationship with Doug Donnelly uh, before you got involved with Drew, or, or was that just random? Uh, not much. He... I won't say that he's older than me, but he's a little bit older than me, um, just a little bit. Uh, so we didn't we didn't overlap in any playing days. But obviously, um, 
you know a bit of your history and you know the guys that have come before you. Uh, so I had met him. Um, obviously, the kid's the similar age. I think at some point in time, we probably uh, ran across each other, but uh, didn't have a really a relationship. I know, but when this whole thing started with them, uh, I said, look, now, if we're, anytime we're getting involved, you know, somebody that's got a different relationship, let's just make sure we know what it is that we're doing. And it was, you know, kind of different because he was from a ways away, and we had never really had an opportunity to get him here and sit down with him. Um, but it was a little easier to build those relationships when you have some type of connection. You talk Coach, about now that you've been breaking speed, yeah. the, the, the outside threat that he gives you? Yeah, I mean, we're always talking about the ability for us, you know, speed-wise, and, and not just saying track speed guys, you know, guys that play the game really fast. Um, so it's nice to hear when guys are inside the locker room already asking about that. Trey said, look, we'll, we'll set it up. We'll, you know, 10-4 is, is one thing in Ohio, 10-5 in Texas. You know, they're already talking smack, and he's not even here yet. Um, but I think what it does for us is just gives us another opportunity to expand on what we've done. You know, we, we always want to continue like we do defensively, the same thing offensively. Uh, we, we know what we need. We know what can take us to the next level. Uh, speed is a big part of that. And I think that uh, we're adding something a bit more dynamic um, that's going to give us something on the outside. Coach, now that you've been doing this for a while at UC, if you can recall back to when you first started, is the recruiting landscape about what you thought it was when you came here in terms of teams you're competing against, places where you can go get a guy, the impact you can make at different parts of the country? Is it, is it about the same as what you thought it was, or is it different? Um, I don't know. I, I would say it's different because I, even in this time, I thought you know going into this COVID kind of time, I'm like, man, we are really just going to have to focus in on Ohio. I just, it's going to be hard. And, and to be honest with you, I, I didn't think that we could go down and get a Shimon Mateo. I didn't think we could, you know, keep a guy like Miles Montgomery in, in Jacksonville, Florida, and, and do some of that. Um, but that's where I give it a incredible amount of credit to, to our coaching staff and, and, our, and our recruiting guys. That they were, they found a way to continue to tie those guys together. Uh, is that a different landscape? Obviously, this year's a different landscape in everything. Um, but I think what's happened in, in you know, the last two years is you know, we, we've kind of thrived in those opportunities to start to create more of a recruiting battle. I think when you walked in the door here, you know, with, with your league, it's really you don't have any recruiting, so to speak, battles as much. Um, you know, you think back to the days when you were in the, you know, the uh, with, with Pitt and, and West Virginia and the Big East. And you, you proximity wise, you create some more rivalries, even when you're in the recruiting battles. And what I'm happy about is in the last probably couple of years, we've created some different rivalries in recruiting, not guys that we play every year. Um, and what we have been able to do. I'm not going to say I didn't think we could do it, but I, I'm, I'm impressed with how our guys have been able to win a lot of those battles. Some of the local guys who were able to come in and visit, you know, before everything hit, obviously, you know, you have no control over what they do, but what impact do you think they had, whether directly or indirectly, on some of those farther flung guys who weren't able to, to come and see things? Huge. I mean, these guys today, whether whether it's you know a guy that's locally or a guy that's in Australia, they've built relationships. And and I, I give credit to obviously the, to the coaches. I give credit to to Chad and Pat and Kelson, and everybody in our in our recruiting departments. Um, you got to give a lot of credit to these guys. You know, the Dante Corleones and the and the Leroy Bowers and the East of Germans that were guys that jumped in early and did an unbelievable job at recruiting these guys as well. The relationships that these guys build via uh, Facebook and Twitter and, and, and Snapchats and things like that, I mean, it's, it's powerful. Uh, it's powerful. And, you know, when they really believe in what they're doing, that's why, you know, when we came here, we said that it was really important for us to, you know, to, to land and, and really create an atmosphere so that we could, you know, that state of Cincinnati, um, not just because there's great football here, but because there's something a little bit different when they become involved in it. You know, even the guys that are already here that are from, you know, the state of Cincinnati, they still get into the recruiting more than, than others. And uh, so I think there's a lot, there's even a bit more pride um, when it's your hometown. And I think that you see it, you know, when, when you see how, how hard these guys work at building relationships with some of these guys outside of here. 
uh, when you look at losing potentially Kobe Bryant and Derek Forrest and, and James Wiggins, how important was it to go restock or just continue to add to that defensive back room and especially guys like, you know, EC that you talked about, uh, Brian Threats, or, um, or Morion Smith, guys like that? Yes. And, and all those guys with some versatility. I think that's the unique thing. Um, you know, yes, Brian Threats is a, is is listed as a safety. I know that Coach Denbrock and them are already talking about him with the ball in his hands, and you know he's a guy that I'm not saying he's a linebacker, but in that some of that. I mean, here's guys that got some versatility to do some different things. Or Marion Smith is the same way. You know, Issa Jarman is he a corner? Is he a safety? Um, so you know what Coach Freeman, those guys have done defensively, and the ability to kind of move guys around and, and create some different things in different spots, based on what guys do. You know, I mean, the way we play, you know, even our field end with Maje Sanders is, is uniquely different, you know, and it's kind of developed because of who Maje is. Um, so when you get some of these guys like Brian, or like Omarion, and, and he's, I mean, there's some things as those they develop that, that just naturally will change within the defense. But um, when you've got guys like that that, are, that you really believe are playmakers and football players, you're just excited to get them into part of it. Luke, there's no question kids like that stuff you were talking about with the videos and all that stuff. But does does anything trump winning in back-to-back 11-win seasons? I mean, is that what really greases the skids, you think, to, to take this thing, like you said, down in the Florida and nationally? It does. I mean, you, you, can, you can build all the hype you want. You can create all the smoke that you want. Um, when you pop the TV on and, and you see what has happened in the last few years, the production on the field is still the number one greatest thing. You know, we, 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 we joke about it at times. Every Monday night we do calls from 8 to 9 o'clock, you know, and, and sometimes you're getting into that. That's game planning time. And the recruiting department comes up and starts rolling in and screaming about recruiting and get them on the phone. And, you know, sometimes I get mad. I'm like, no, you know what the best recruiting is? That's to win. We, get, we need another 20 minutes. Give it, you know, obviously there's a balance there. Um, but I've told even my own, I, I told him, I said, the greatest thing you could do is go to a program that's it's got positive momentum and a lot of positive vibes. And, you can do a lot of different things to create positive momentum and things like that, but you, there's nobody, no way you can create it better than winning on the football field. In this I'll year of COVID, go ahead, George. I'll go ahead. piggyback off the uh, off the winning thing. You talk about building positive momentum. Use it as an example, even though you don't want to talk about it. So I'll just flat out ask you because it's the biggest talker in college football past 24 hours. Do you know where you're ranked right now? No, I my, I came home last night and my my boys were starting. They were watching the. ESPN or something, and they were talking about it, and Kirk Herbstreit was on there, and I just said, turn it off. And they said, I can't believe it. I said, I don't care. Turn it off. I don't want to talk about it. So I, I've i heard. I think I saw it on the billboard coming out of practice on, on you know, outside fifth, third. Um, but it is what it is. You know, I think, like I said, you, you got to play your best ball at the end of the year, and we got an opportunity to, to, to be on display Saturday. I can follow up with to that then. When you see – um, I don't know if you see it, but I'll, I'll fill you in. There are national reporters, you know, all over the place saying how the committee didn't value you guys right. There's three, three, two lost teams ahead of the other team that lost to a Sun Belt team by 17. Um, even though you don't care about the rankings or say you don't, um, does it you say I'm lying? Does it add any butt? Huh? What'd you say? You say I'm lying? <laughs> I know you're not lying. No, go ahead. Yeah. Does it add anything to have that national buzz? I mean, you. I, I know you're not going to admit to us that you get mad about the ranking slipping to nine, but does it help to get that national recognition where people are mad that Florida's above Cincinnati or Iowa State's above Cincinnati? That's twice that you referred to me as not not kind of being somewhat truthful. So uh, it is what it is. I, I understand. Um, no, I, look, I, I really, I mean, I, I really believe that sometimes I think things are done just to create some more energy and momentum. Uh, I know for us, either way. We use it in a very good way, even when there's somewhat negative talk, meaning that you drop to nine or whatever it is. You know what? When they're talking about us, that means we're, we're at least in, in everybody's thoughts, um, you know, and, and our job is to keep them talking about us and make it as controversial as possible. Um, if we can do what, we, what we're supposed to do and what we want to do on Saturday, then we can at least make it a bit more uh, controversial and interesting. So whatever's going to happen, um, I'm just hoping maybe we're, they're setting us up for, for, for a splash of some sorts if we can take care of business. Send your first signing day press 
conference that, that if they keep score, we want to win. Yeah. Uh, are, are you aware that you were once again the number one recruiting class in the American Athletic Conference this year? Uh, I, I don't know, but I knew, I knew about six, seven, eight weeks ago we weren't, and I kind of went down to the recruiting office and I like to call poke the bear a little bit and um, was kind of – was called right after that. Well, yeah, did you? I, I would, I would, I, I, you know what I'm talking about then. Um, to just make sure that, you know, yes, they're going to keep score, definitely want to, to win. But uh, I'm not positive. I know that they got something on this sheet here, but I like to kind of wait to the end of the night to see how it all wraps up. But, uh, um, so you, so you don't care about national rankings, but you do care about recruit rankings. If, in a way to motivate, yes. And I think that's the same way as, is you use it for what it is that you need it for. And, you know, it, it's the game and the, the rankings as a football team are played on the field. So I don't worry about it as much because I think that's what's going to show. Um, there is no other way other than what, what uh, 247 or Rivals or somebody else believes or says about a kid. So um, it's, it's used as a motivation, just like if you know, I don't care, but if we dropped, I can use that and I will use that with our team and our guys as motivation. Um, but deep down inside, I don't, you know, just like the recruiting rankings, to be honest with you, when this, when we get done today, I'll say, okay, now we'll really evaluate the recruiting class in two years and find out who they are and what we've done. And if you can do that, because that's, you know, now into our fourth year, we really evaluate once you get them two years later to, to what that re recruiting class really, really was. All right, I'll ask you a non-ranking question. <laughs> uh, the fans, how about having 5,800 in the stands? I know you've been – talking about how good the band has been and, and the players' families, but to have, it's not a full nip, nip at night situation, yep. but to have almost 6,000 in there, what is that like? 5831, I think, to be exact. But um, no, it, it is really, you know, when it came out the other way, the other day, a couple of the guys on the team said something to me. So I know, you know, they know what's going on. And then obviously we got the call yesterday, I think it was, about what was uh, 5831 or whatever, uh, almost 6,000. It, it's really big. It really is. I mean, to me, uh, as much as you talk to rankings, for our kids to at least create and have a little bit of an atmosphere um, for all that they've sacrificed and done this year, I'm really excited for them. And I know they are as well. And, and that's, yes, I, I pay more attention to that. And I probably ask Cos or, or John maybe more questions about that than I ever would about where we're ranked of any sorts. Because for me, I think um, it creates something for our guys and something that our guys really deserve. I know it's a unique time, and it's we all have to be able to play through it. But it's uh, you know it's really nice to see that it's something that these these guys deserve.